wherever you are. Make it, make it T T T Truth Frequency Radio. I will now remember the works of the Lord and declare the things that I have seen. In the words of the Lord are his works. The sun that giveth light looketh upon all things, and the work thereof is full of the glory of the Lord. The Lord hath not given power to the saints to declare all his marvelous works, which the Almighty Lord firmly settled, that whatsoever is might be established for his glory. Welcome, friends. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Secrets of Build here on Truth Frequency Radio. And I'm honored to have as guests with me this evening, Pastor Nate Wolf. Pastor Wolf, are you there, brother? Yes, thanks for having me. Uh, it's a great pleasure. And I thank you for your willingness and for taking the time to join us this evening. I had the great pleasure of meeting um, Pastor Nate at the uh, Flat Earth Second International Convention in Denver. And so, uh, and, you know, I want you to be able to share your story and to give a platform for what you have gone through. And so it is most certainly an interesting testimony, to say the least. But if you would, Pastor, please share your information, contact, or any websites or YouTube or anything that like that that you'd like to put out. Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, so my YouTube channel is Fired for Truth. That's Fired, F-O-R, Truth. And I started that uh, channel uh, just about a week or so after I got fired. And so that's my most active channel. I did have another channel uh, that had been up for several months. Um, and I think I had about 17 uh, subscribers on that one <laughs> over about a seven-month period. And uh, since I began Fired for Truth, um, that's been the active Facebook channel. And then I also am on Facebook as Nate Wolf. Uh, I do have some slots available if uh, folks uh, would like to friend me on Facebook. Um, and then I do have uh, a Patreon link that I'd like to share for those that would be willing to help support me monthly as I'm trying to do this as a full-time ministry of sharing truth. And that's www.patreon.com forward slash Nate Wolf. And uh, some people like to do emails. Uh, I can be emailed at discerningdad73 at gmail.com, discerningdad73 at gmail.com. Or you can message me on Facebook. I do have a Facebook Messenger. Uh, most excellent. Um, and for those that don't know your story, let's go ahead and speak about why it is your YouTube channel is called Fire for Truth. Sure. And uh, if you would share a little bit about that, and then we'll go into uh, your general testimony and how you came to awakening on, you know, biblical cosmology, but so much else as well. Sure. So, you know, I had been, uh, I had really been studying uh, the flat earth biblical creation for about a year and a half. But fast forward to the uh, few weeks leading up to uh, the creation of Fired for Truth on YouTube, and that was the end of August. My wife and I had attended the Take on the World 18 conference in Vermilion, Ohio. Uh, my wife had found out the beginning of August about this conference, and uh, we'd been studying on truth-related topics for about a year and five months prior to that conference, but uh, we had never been to a truth conference, and my wife uh, came across it uh, she may have heard it on someone else's channel, probably, uh, oh, it might have been like, um, you know, one of like Mark's channel or one of these big channels. She heard an advertisement and she messaged me and she says, she says, Nate, check this link out. So I clicked on this link and I said, oh, that, that looks like a, an interesting uh, conference. I said, where is it? She says, it's about an hour and 10 minutes from our house. So I said, wow, that's really close, you know, and uh, I kind of had wanted to go to uh, Raleigh um, in 17, but I was just kind of new to some of that awakening and I uh, didn't have uh, the money or the time really by the time I found out about Raleigh. So my wife said, hey, we got to go to this, you know, we got to check this out. And we were surprised um, 
how many well-known speakers in the truth community were at this event. And so we went to it and uh, we were just blown away by the, the atmosphere, uh, the people. There was a strong uh, spirit of fellowship there. And uh, not everybody who was there were believers, but many, many believers were there. And there were some very good topics. Uh, of course, biblical cosmology was a major thread at Take on the World. Uh, but there are many, many other topics. And uh, so we kind of uh, went through the biblical cosmology track and then dabbled in a few other uh, little topics that we could squeeze in. And we watched the uh, keynotes in the evenings, uh, such as Rob Skiba, and Robbie Davidson, and whatnot. And so at the end of this conference, we were just kind of taking this all in. And uh, both my wife and I, uh, the last several weeks before the conference, had felt like there was, uh, you know, some kind of significance to where we were at on this timeline. We'd been studying for a year and a half. And then at the end of this conference, we were driving home. And my wife and I were talking and kind of just uh, decompressing. And, you know, well, what is this, you know, where do we go from here? What does this conference uh, mean? You know, does it mean something or are we just continuing our learning? And uh, my wife and I both had the strong feelings in that, uh, that somehow I needed to be involved in this community sharing uh, some of what I've learned instead of just being someone who, you know, is constantly taking, uh, taking in knowledge, so to speak. So we began to uh, discuss it further, and we decided, look, we need to pray about this. And uh, we decided we would pray for uh, 40 days. We just kind of picked that number. It seemed to fit, and uh, it was a, a good long period of time. We didn't want to make any hasty decisions, you know. We really wanted to, to focus on seeking the will of God and, and asking Him, is, is there some meaning to all of this? Is there something you would have us to do? Um, so that's kind of the, you know, the, the, the big part of what got us really thinking and praying hard about this. And then a few weeks after the conference, we had continued our prayers, and uh, I had reached out to a couple of the speakers uh, from Take on the World 18, particularly uh, Chad Taylor, who spoke out there uh, on biblical cosmology, and he had been praying for me and checked in on me uh, about one day a week for a couple of weeks. And it was about three weeks after the Take on the World 18 conference um, I ended up getting uh, kind of a disturbing text message <laughs> from the leadership of my church where I served as a minister for about seven and a half years. Um, so I don't know if you want me to kind of go into that part now yeah, or please. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I got a text on September 14th, I believe it was the 14th, it was a Friday, and it was about eight in the morning, and I got a text message from one of our five elders, and it's just said, uh, you know, Nate, uh, you and all of the elders will be meeting at the church building at nine o'clock. And that just kind of struck me as a very strange, you know, text to get in the morning. Uh, you know, there was really very little information other than all of the elders will be meeting with you at the church building in an hour. And that struck me as strange because two or three of the elders were uh, working full time still, and uh, I just thought to myself, "There's no way that all of the elders would clear their schedule to meet first thing in the morning unless there was some kind of a big issue." And uh, there was no detail, you know, given in the text other than come to the building at this time and that we will be meeting with you. So, you know, this uh, this wasn't my first rodeo. I'd been in ministry you know, full-time for, um, since about 2001. And so I had worked with a few different churches before that and, you know, had some, uh, different conflicts and things to work through over the years. And so it struck me as very odd. And, uh, I thought, well, I better call one of the elders, uh, and see if they'll tell me what this is about. Uh, I didn't have a really stellar relationship uh, with the one who texted me, so I decided that I would call a different elder, uh, someone that I considered more of a, a closer friend and uh, who had always been a very straight shooter with me. Uh, and I 
appreciated his, you know, his demeanor and how he handled himself. So I called this other brother and I said, Hey, I got this text message out of the blue and, you know, here's what it says. And I said, well, I said, well, what's, what's going on? You know, I said, Mm -hmm. what can you tell me about the purpose of this meeting? And he kind of hesitated. And then he, he said, he wasn't going to tell me. And I, and I kind of shocked me. I said, well, wait a second. I said, uh, I said, well, you know, I don't like ambushes <laughs> right. and no, and nobody likes to be ambushed. But mm-hmm. I said, I, I said, I've been ambushed before and, and I don't like to be ambushed. I said, um, you know, I need to know what's going on. And he kind of refused to, uh, to tell me and his demeanor was just very short. Um, and that also surprised me. So then I started getting this, you know, sick feeling in my stomach, like, man, I, I might be getting fired and I don't even know, you know, why, you know, what's mm-hmm. the deal here? Something's going on. So I just told him I got a little angry, uh, because I had been fired about eight years prior, uh, from a congregation that I had worked at for about seven, seven and a half years. And it had nothing to do with, you know, these kind of truth related subjects. It had to do more with principles of leadership and, uh, so I had been fired once before and kind of had that, you know, last minute out of the blue phone call from the leadership. We need to have a meeting and then them not telling me what it was about. So I was, you know, I was having some flashbacks, <laughs> so to speak. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, I'm a little more roadworthy at this point and a little more mature and a little more uh, assertive, you know, in protecting myself and standing up for myself. And so I said to this elder on the phone, I said, well, here's the deal. I said, if you're not going to tell me what this is about, at least give me some kind of a general topic, you know, is it my performance? Is it, you know, what is it? Uh, I said that I'm not going to meet with you guys. You know, you can, yeah, you can meet by yourselves, you know, have a nice meeting kind of a thing. (laughs) So, you know, I think that kind of surprised them. So he said, well, hold on a second. Uh, I'll call you back. So he calls, Apparently, he called the other elders or texted the other elders, and about 10 or 15 minutes later, I got a call back. And uh, my wife had just left uh, our house for her work. Uh, She had left about, oh, 10 minutes prior to when this guy called me back. So he says, he says to me very terse and very direct, he says, the elders will be meeting at the building at 9 o'clock, and it's up to you if you decide to come or not. And that really shocked me. And so I just said, I said, so this is an ambush. And his mm-hmm. exact, his exact words were, and, and this really shocked me, especially coming from this particular elder, his exact words were, yes, you are being ambushed. Whoa. And, uh, <laughs> I just, you know, Zen, I was just kind of reeling from these statements. I mean, I was trying to be fair but assertive. I was trying to be direct and get to the point without being rude, but trying to force their hand a little bit to say, hey, you know, tell me what this is about. And uh, they just wouldn't budge. And at that point, I was about 95% sure I was getting fired because I'm thinking, well, if they're willing to just say, don't show up, you know, that's your choice. Mm -hmm. uh, That kind of gave me a hint, but I still didn't know exactly uh, you know, what this was about. I mean, I did have a thought, well, could this be about the conference we went to? But the the strange thing was, was that we had told our four children, we have a, a young adult and teenage children, we had told them we were going, uh, you know, the weekend of Take On The World, we were going on a vacation, we told them, you know, where basically where we were going, but uh, as far as the town, but we did not tell them what we were going to, because, uh, you know, every time the preacher and his wife go out of town, especially <laughs> on a Sunday, if it includes a Sunday, a lot of times uh, church people get to worrying, thinking maybe their preacher is uh, interviewing somewhere else, you know, and they start uh, bombarding kids with questions. So we had just told them we were taking a, a vacation together and we'd be back in three days. And we told them, you know, where we were going to be at. So nobody, including our kids, knew what we were doing. And, um, so it struck me as odd that, you know, well, you know, they wouldn't have known about this flat earth conference, you know? Mm -hmm. And so anyway, um, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about, about that in a minute. But so I went to, uh, I went to call my wife and she, like I said, she was about 15 minutes out towards work. 
And she was like, whoa. She says, uh, I'm turning the car around. She says, I am coming back to the church building, and I will meet you at the church building. She says, uh, it sounds like there's something major. At a minimum, there's some kind of major misunderstanding. But she says, if they're, if they're trying to fire you, she says, I am not going to let you go through this by yourself. So she was very, oh, very supportive. Sweet. That's yeah, awesome. she was very supportive, and she was pretty hacked off too, you know. Yeah, I can uh, because, imagine. Because you know she was feeling the same emotions and thoughts from eight years prior when I got fired. Right. She was thinking, right. "Whoa, wait a second, you know, is the church going to do this to us again?" You know, mm -hmm. and uh, so we met in the parking lot, and the elders were all five. They were kind of just standing outside in the parking lot, kind of huddled together talking, and they they never gave us eye contact. They saw us pull in. But uh, my wife ended up going to the, the foyer uh, just to pray, and I went with the elders to the conference room. And uh, so as I was walking with the elders, they're kind of not really engaging with me, and I just said, are we meeting in the conference room? And one of them kind of said, mumbled yes, you know. And so it was like this. It was like there was a funeral, you know. Everybody was very, very somber. So I thought, okay, I'm not really liking this, you know. Uh, but I, I had really shown up, um, because I wanted to know what this was about. You know, I'm like, yeah. okay, if you guys are going to treat me this way, I'm, I'm going right. to know what's going on and I'm, and I'm going to ask you some detailed questions about it. So we sat down in the conference room and, uh, one of the elders said, Hey, you know, why don't we begin with the prayer? And at that moment I thought, you know, that's a good start. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and I, absolutely. I, I kind of, you know, backed off the ledge a little bit there. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, you know, what if I'm overreacting? Mm -hmm. What, what if they got some misinformation or there was some kind of, you know, um, something that, you know, they are uh, misinformed about and, you know, I can talk to them about, I can share with them. Cause I knew I hadn't done anything wrong. Right. 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 I, I knew I hadn't done anything wrong worthy of being fired. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, okay, something is just not fitting well here. And maybe, maybe they just kind of panicked about something and they're going to ask me some questions. We're going to have a discussion and this is going to work itself out. Uh, because when they had the prayer, I said to myself, okay, this is good. They're, they're focusing in spiritually, uh, and asking God to bless this meeting. So I thought, okay. That means that their demeanor is, even though it's been very short, you know, and aggressive with me, uh, maybe their demeanor will be fair in this meeting. So as I waited to, uh, after the prayer ended and I waited to hear what was going on, um, one elder kind of spoke up. It was, it was clear that he was basically the chairman of this meeting. And so he said, there was really no small talk whatsoever. And uh, the interesting thing was, is I was the only one that had brought their Bible into this meeting. Uh, I had brought three things. I brought my Bible, my cell phone, and my water bottle. And I was hoping that, uh, you know, if it did have to do with this conference, that I was going to have an opportunity to share with them from Scripture about biblical creation, why, why you know, it's important. And uh, I noticed that they didn't have their <laughs> they didn't have their Bibles. I thought, oh, that's never a good sign. Right. Um, but this elder just pipes up right after the prayer, and he's kind of taking almost uh, a prosecuting attorney kind of an attitude. He says, uh, "It's been brought to our attention." And right at that moment, I'm thinking, okay, so what you mean is somebody gossiped about me? <laughs> right, right. You know, I'm thinking, what's been brought to your attention? He says, it's been brought to our attention that on uh, August 24th through the 26th that you attended the Take on the World 18 conference in Vermilion, in Ohio. And as he's, as he's rolling this out, I'm thinking, am I being interrogated? You know, is mm -hmm. this, you know, is this the And FBI? what does it matter? if? You yeah, I know. I'm just thinking there. I'm just kind of nodding, you know, as, yeah. as he's saying this. And I said, yes, I said, uh, that's true. My wife and I went to the conference on our vacation, vacation? which was, yeah, yeah, which was approved. And I said, we, we used only our own funds. I said, we didn't use any church funds. You know, I had access to a church credit card, which I, I used, you know, for different purchases and things and always turned in my receipts and, and got mm -hmm. large, larger items pre-approved. So, uh, you know, I thought, I don't see the problem here, even if even if they thought that was a little strange, you know, 
um, I hadn't done anything wrong. And uh, again, personal vacation approved by them and uh, everything was paid for on our own dime. So he starts to say, well, we can't have a minister with that kind of association. And I'm just like, whoa, you know, like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, you know what I mean? He says, we've been to uh, the website, uh, we've watched the videos, and we cannot let you in our pulpit Sunday. Now, this was a Friday, so, you know, all of this is a shock to me anyway. But he says, we cannot let you in our pulpit Sunday. And I said, what do you mean you can't let me in the pulpit? I said, uh, I've I've been your minister for seven and a half years. I said, when in, in that time have I ever taught some untruth, you know, knowingly, willingly, purposefully, you know, when have I uh, caused any drama or, you know, hijacked the pulpit for some personal, you know, reason? Mm-hmm. And there was complete silence. And so they couldn't answer that question because they knew that the answer was, well, Nate, you've never done that. Yeah, you know, not, not that I have been perfect, you know, but um, the stuff that, you know, the way that they were treating me was like I was a criminal, you know, mm-hmm. on trial. Right. right. And so the guy finally says, well, it, it really doesn't matter because it's it's a done deal. And <laughs> I'm thinking, whoa, OK. And I said, well, don't you I said, aren't you going to ask me some questions? You know, I tried to engage with them about, you know, well, well, what what's exactly the problem? And they wouldn't elaborate beyond, you know, we can't have a minister with that kind of association. They never said exactly what videos they watched. In fact, you know, Take On The World, uh, there weren't that many videos on the actual Take On The World site. You would have to go to several of the speakers. You know, as you know, speakers often record their items or the host will eventually, you know, download or upload some videos or whatever to different uh, YouTube channels or websites. So... I thought, wow, did these guys like do some kind of criminal investigation, you know? So it was just very vague and it was all so sudden. And then uh, they slid, this man slid a piece of paper towards me. It was a one sheet paid piece of paper that basically said that I was terminated effective immediately and that it was irreversible and that they would be giving me uh, eight weeks of severance and that I needed to turn in all my stuff, clear out my office, you know, within a few days, turn in the keys, turn in anything that belonged to the church, you know, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And uh, the funny thing was, is it wasn't written in any kind of a contract language. It was basically just, here's what we're doing. You know, this is this, blah, blah, blah. And then here's what our expectation is. And And this is what was written. Basically, we're treating this as a private matter, and uh, so basically we expect you to do the same, and, um, you know, uh, we expect you to not have uh, communication, public communication about this is the gist of what was said. So I'm just sitting there thinking, whoa, you know, so I'm fired, like, already, Mm -hmm. and they, they haven't asked me a single question. Right. Uh, that was that was the most shocking part about it, other than, you know, the way I had been treated on the phone prior to the meeting. Um, I just couldn't believe that that this was already decided. In other words, then they had decided this before they right. even texted me to let me exactly. know I was meeting. I mean, because this letter had already been drafted up. Right. And so I was just kind of sitting there in shock, and uh, I tried to engage a little bit more. And every time I tried to, you know, kind of ask a question or share some details, uh, this elder started to get almost kind of angry, like he was starting to get, you know, angry and was shutting me down. And I kind of Mm -hmm. felt like, you know, I guess there's no point in even trying because if I had, if I had pressed it, I think he probably would have blew his lid, you know? Blew up, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so the other shocking thing was that these, these other four elders were just basically sitting there. Um, they did not say a single word. They wouldn't even look at me. Uh And uh, it was just so very strange. And so I said, look, I said, uh, okay. I said, I need about two hours. They wanted me to turn in my keys immediately. I said, guys, I'm not going to turn in my keys immediately. I'm going to get all my books and all my personal stuff out of my office. And uh, all I need is one to two hours to do that. I said, you guys know me. You've worked with me for over seven years. 
I said, you know, I'm not going to do anything to damage the building. I'm not going to steal anything. I'm not going to cause any problems. I said, just give me some time, a few hours to clear out my office. And then after I clear out my office, I'll turn in all the keys I have. I'll turn the church credit card in and I'll turn in any other property that belongs to the church. And I had like an iPad, I think, that belonged to the church. And mm-hmm. I had some some other books and things at my home that I needed to deliver. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the gist of that meeting. And uh, that ended up um, creating a big ripple in the rest of <laughs> the rest of my day uh, after being fired. I'm sure we're probably about to about to go to a break here, but um, the yeah, the hours at okay. So yeah, uh, that's that's that part in a nutshell. The of being fired for simply going to a truth conference. That is utterly ridiculous to me. And um, well, when we come back from break, uh, I want to ask you if you thought about making a you know a larger issue out of it and uh, forcing them to legally you know a lawsuit or something. Sure. But anyway, we'll be right back, everyone, for a second. All right, welcome back, everybody, for a second segment. And so I want to return to you, Pastor, so you can continue with your story. But I did want to ask you if you had considered uh, bringing some kind of legal lawsuit or some kind of precedent in that manner against them, because it seems like, really, they have no grounds for firing you and that if you wanted to contest it at least it would be um a story which would be of interest to you know the mainstream media uh, or at least to the community there uh and to at least the other people that go to that church how you know such condemning and judging bias that you can just be thrown out uh for just attending a truth conference i mean it's ridiculous. They didn't even ask you where you were in your beliefs on that and whether, you know, even if it was in opposition to the mainstream thought and what they teach, that still no reason, in my opinion, to condemn others or to, um, you know, just fire them and disrupt their lives in the manner that they did to you. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was shocking because, uh, it had been one thing if they said, hey, Nate, we have some questions for you. You know, we right. understand you went to a conference, yada, yada. You know, where are you at with this? You know, what, uh, which sessions did you go to at this conference? You know, uh, what, you know, what's your intention, you know, moving forward? Is this, is this something you intend to preach on, teach on? You know, I right. mean, I, I was friends, you know, f- friendly with all of them, but f- pretty decent friends with a couple of these guys. They knew me very well, you know, for, for seven and a half years almost. And that was the shocking part. Now, uh, you know, as far as, uh, I, I decided to not do anything legal, uh, mm-hmm. because I, I knew that this was going to cause damage to the church. Um, right. and I knew, you know, this is a church of about 200 people. So, you know, you've got five men that made this decision, but there was, right. you know, several, many, many people that had no idea this was even happening. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, I thought to myself, you know, there was already enough uh, drama, uh, when they made the announcement. And I figured that many of the people at the church would be, um, you know, confused about what happened because, you know, they're only going to hear one side of it. And so exactly. that's why, that's why I decided to go public with some interviews. Good for uh, you. But I decided that against the, the suing portion only because I, I knew that there would be opportunity and there has been, and there may be more opportunity in the future as people become, you know, more aware of, of really what happened and more comfortable people reached out to me and actually have had some, Uh, short uh, studies with some people from the church related to biblical creation. And so I didn't want to do anything to cause uh, more stress to the situation uh, Mm -hmm. than there already was. And I just, uh, I, I, you know, had they not given me some severance, if they had just said nothing, if there was, you know, nothing given, I I probably would have, you know, considered that. Um, And I just, I didn't want to 
I didn't want to get tied up in courts over the situation. That was just my personal thought and my wife's yeah, thought, yeah. my wife's thought as well. But, yeah. uh, but, but you're right. I mean, it was such a shocking situation um, to fire someone for going somewhere on their vacation. Um, you know, and the, here's, the, here's the strange thing, okay? Uh, one of our, uh, or our associate minister and his wife, uh, they went somewhere uh, on a vacation that was, you know, would be considered fringe by the mainstream people. Uh, it was, I'm just going to say it was a convention, you know, it was a, a convention mm -hmm. of sorts, like a gaming convention, but they went to a convention that, you know, there's all kinds of p weird, strange folks, you know, walking around in costumes and there's some questionable stuff that happens mm -hmm. at some of these places. Uh, th this individual and his wife went to a conference, posted 30 or 60 pictures on their social media about it. And nothing happened to them. You know, that would mm -hmm. that could be considered a very strange event for a minister and his wife to go to and then to <laughs> post publicly. Yeah. So I, I thought it was interesting that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a Comic-Con or some, you know, strange uh, fringe thing that uh, a minister gets fired for. It's for going to a conference that is trying to get to the bottom of biblical creation, you know? Right. So Among other is, things, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and I know there was some stuff there on Torah, and there was some stuff there on, um, you know, satanic ritual abuse. There was a, at least one uh, small talk about uh, vaccinations. So, you know, there were some different topics there, and, and I kind of wondered if some of those uh, other side topics may have also figured into it, because... There is a very, very large medical community in the Toledo, Ohio area, and several of the people at the congregation are nurse practitioners, nurses, um, and even some of the elders' uh, family members are doctors and, and nurse types. So I, I figured, you know, it could have been anything. It could, you know, spin the wheel. I mean, it could have been flat earth. It could have been the anti-vax talk. It could have been, right. you know, Torah stuff. Uh so that's the strange thing, Zen, is they never told me specifically. They just said, we can't have a minister with that kind of association. Mm -hmm. That's all they told me. So uh, that was quite a shock. And then, you know, so my wife and I, uh, since my wife was at the church building, we had both of our cars. You know, um, I had 20 years of ministry books and files and, and you know, all kinds of stuff in that office. It, it took us uh, an hour and a half. Uh, thankfully, our home was only about a, a mile down the road from the church building because we had to make five or six trips uh, with laundry baskets and and any any free uh, free box we could grab, you know. Um, and we hu we huffed it and we got it all out of there. And and some people have seen my uh, uh, I guess it's kind of coined the garage video now, where after I had brought all my books onto tables in my garage. I did a short video on my YouTube channel uh, uh, about it, and it was just felt so surreal. You know, I'm standing in my garage with with all of the contents of my office, and a few hours earlier, I was planning on going in and, and having another day of ministry, you know, on a, on a Friday, no less, which is normally a pretty relaxed day. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so, you know, the, uh, and this is, you know, we had been praying fervently for about a few weeks before the conference. We just knew there was something about this conference that was significant. And so we really had been praying and asking the Father to show us, you know, what's what do we need to learn? What do we need to consider? Is there something we're missing? And then after the conference, we really, really prayed. And, uh, you know, like I said, my wife and I were going to take 40 days and not make a move, just pray. And then I get fired only about 20 days. 21 days into that 40 days. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it became real clear that maybe, maybe this is an answer to prayer. It wasn't how right, we, right. You know, yeah. it wasn't how we thought this was going to work out. Right. Uh, but I had called Chad Taylor who had been at take on the world 18. And, and I told him what had happened because he had been praying for me and we had touched base a few weeks in a row. And he was kind of shocked. And, uh, you know, Chad's a pretty cautious person. He was also in agreement. Hey, don't make any drastic moves. Be patient. You know, if it's of the Lord, he's going to reveal that to you. But even Chad said the day I called, he was like, wow. He says, Nate, he says, I, I know this sounds strange. He says, but I think that God is answering your prayer. I think God has 
freed you from a church that really was very controlling and okay. very inflexible and unwilling to, you know, to dialogue with their minister and get into the scriptures. And, uh, or I even said, listen. I mean, or, my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Talk about rigid. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the, and this was another confirmation that this was God's answer to prayer, at least initially, was I spoke with one other person. And after I spoke with Chad, that was Rick Hummer. And uh, he had been at the conference as well. Yeah. And, and he just, he struck me as just a very genuine Christian man. And he had told me before, Hey, call me anytime. So I messaged him on Facebook. I'm like, dude, I said, uh, I just got fired for attending the take on the world conference. I need someone to talk to. And he's like, dude, call me, you know? So I called him and we must've talked for about two hours and he was, awesome. he was very encouraging. And you know what he told me? He said, Nate, he says, this is significant. And you don't, he says, you don't understand what's happening here. I said, yeah, tell me about it. I said, this is all fresh and new to me. And he says, the folks in this community, the leaders, you know, speakers of this community, we a lot of us have been praying, uh, not that someone would get fired, but many ministers have been getting fired, and some of them have even preached it. I never even preached it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that's the crazy thing. Right. But he said uh, many, many ministers and other Christians who have tried to share this and have gotten run out of the church or fired have reached out to, you know, multiple speakers and, you know, people like Dean Odell and Rob Skiba, you know, especially the ministry types and, you know, ask for encouragement and advice and then have all kind of disappeared under a rock somewhere, you know, like Mm -hmm. they just did not want to go public. And my situation was, Hey, I'm going to preach the truth. You know, this, this, this must be God saying, you need to speak out about this. And he says, we have been, we have been praying for more people, but especially for more ministers to, to step up boldly to the plate and, and say, Hey, I believe that what the Bible says about creation and, and, you know, science is lying to us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so that kind of opened my mind. I was like, wow, I never knew that, you know. Um, and within the next several hours, I had spoken to Robbie Davidson of Celebrate Truth. Uh, I had talked to Rob Skiba for a short time. I think he was really busy on some pro- big projects. He was holed up in a bunker somewhere <laughs> underground. <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, people were like, well, it's going to be like Fort Knox to get to him. But he specifically asked me to reach out to him, and he called me back. And, uh, you know, I talked to several other people. I talked to Chris Bailey, who uh, Chris and Liz were the ones that had organized and put on Take on the World. And I said, I said, Chris, man, I said, I got fired for going to the conference. And he's like, what? You know, (laughs) at first he kind of felt bad. And then he was like, he then he got upset and he's like, hey, we need to get the word out on this. Like, you you shouldn't treat people that way. And, And, you know, he said to me, he said, you don't understand how tight this community is. You know, he says, when word gets out of this, he says, people are going to rally, rally to your support. Mm. And so could you imagine? I mean, I, I get fired. I get this sudden text out of the blue. Then I'm called in. Then I'm fired suddenly. Within an hour to two hours, I've, I've got everything completely removed from my office. My wife and I are sitting at home, not really sure exactly what's going on, but trying to make sense of it and trying to, you know, rely on the Lord. And then all, within a few hours after that, I had talked to four or five folks that I considered, you know, very well-known, influential people who normally I would never, you know, uh, get a phone call from or probably have the chance to talk to. So I was, uh, I really saw that as God is doing something big here, you know. Um, yeah, so yeah. absolutely. So what a day, you know. Right, right. Um, just a couple comments one from lucky she says y'all wonder why i don't go to church i had a similar thing happen to me suffice it to say there was no holy spirit in that meeting another individual in the chat room says that what happened to you exactly happened to them except for they brought a lawsuit against the church and was successful in um you know in um bringing getting some uh some kind of severance or some kind of, yeah. you know, as far as what they did was wrong. But um, so, yeah, a lot of people sympathize and I would ask people to please, you know, support you 
as you go through this transition period to settle into the new role because um, I think your story is important and that you are right to stand up with truth and not just on biblical cosmology, but the fact that uh, the churches themselves have taken on an antichrist demeanor. I mean, mm. there's so much division and judgment and condemnation. Even today, I was speaking with a couple people that um, were, you know, are considered biblical authorities or uh, on the alternative truth movement, and they are judging and condemning me for certain aspects of my teaching. Certainly, I am not conventional or traditional in the way that I um, speak on certain aspects of what I believe to be truth. But I feel like if it's not a salvation issue, we should be able to come together and share discourse without throwing names or calling people Gnostics or heretics or whatever. Yeah. And yet that's that's not the case. There's so much um, just straight up enmity and hatred in the church for truth that is coming forward in so many aspects because I feel like, you know, we're at the end of days and that the Most High is revealing truth in a lot of ways, which is contrary to what is being taught in the mainstream churches. And I also feel like um, a lot of people are being called out of the churches because, one, they're not finding answer to their questions and that the especially when it comes down to the more esoteric aspects of what we're dealing with uh, the new world order you know things like 9-11 government sponsored terror the controlled opposition all of that um, and then the other things that you had mentioned as far as you know the dangers of vaccines the, the chemtrails the poisons in the food and the water mm -hmm. and all those things because the, the father told us that my people are killed for lack of knowledge. And truthfully, in this day and age, it, being ignorant, it, it puts yourself and your family at risk. And so we really have no choice anymore but to become knowledgeable on who the enemy is and how they are attacking us at every turn of the way. Um, yeah. You know, things like the 5G and all of that. And, you know, all the, the fires that are going on in California, the weather manipulation. I mean, there's so many things that are um, putting everybody, uh, I mean, their whole livelihood, businesses, you know, the people losing their houses. I mean, mm -hmm. we are really uh, at risk in this day and age. But please comment on that. And then we'll Yeah, it's, I mean, there is so much. And, you know, um, I have always, and you can ask my wife, she'll tell you, for many, many years, I've always been praying about truth, interested in truth, wanting to, you know, to check my own doctrine and teaching. Yeah. You know, the letters to Timothy always uh, really uh, affected me, you know, because for many years I was the young minister, you know. And so I, mm -hmm. I was often trying to make sure, you know, I'm watching my my doctrine, my teaching, um, and the, the truth, you know, truth was such an important subject. And more and more recently, the last few years, I had, you know, really scripture had been jumping out at me relating to deception, lies, you know, Satan's yeah. tactics and movements. And so uh, it was about uh, backing up. It was about a year and a half ago when um, I started praying about truth and it was... At that time, I had actually been asked by a different congregation up in Michigan to come and speak on a Wednesday night. They had a summer series of Wednesday night lessons on a, on a theme, and uh, it was some type of an apologetics theme. I can't remember the exact theme, but I was asked to do a lesson on the flood. And so I had studied on the flood, and uh, this was about a year and a half ago. 
a uh, year and seven months ago now. And uh, so I'd studied on the flood and I was prepared and I decided to go on YouTube and see if there was any good uh, videos on the flood, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I watched a couple of videos on the flood and then all of a sudden there were some interesting titles that had popped up in the sidebar. You know, one of them was The Global Lie by Celebrate Truth. Uh-huh. And uh, so I clicked on that and went down a little bit of a rabbit hole there for about, <laughs> right. about an hour and 20 something minutes. And then, of course, once I clicked on that video, uh, now I'm starting to see things that say flat earth in the titles. And so I started clicking on a few other titles and, you know, I was like, whoa, uh, because what really blew me away was the scriptures were that were being used. I'm like, you know, those, those scriptures, they're quoting them accurately. What in the world is going on here? And so, you know, so really the, the flat earth biblical creation stuff is what, um, what started a very diligent search leading up to the conference. But as I mentioned earlier, for many years, I have always uh, been willing and interested in looking and searching out some of these, you know, quote unquote fringe topics or, Mm -hmm. you know, rechecking doctrines and things like that. My wife can tell you that, you know, a lot of times I would get on a, uh, a search of something and I might read a few books on it and do some studying and praying about it. So I think that, that God knew that I was the type of person that was always open to seeking truth because ultimately I I just wanted to know truth. I wanted to be as effective as I could be in preaching that and teaching that truth. Yes. Uh, you know, I didn't want to be deceived uh, because right. I knew that I had a responsibility, a great responsibility as a teacher of, right. the, of God. And so, you know, you mentioned Watch something. Watch terrible. Yeah, and, and some yeah. of these other subjects, you know, I, I often on had— within the last, you know, two years had dabbled in some stuff relating to the Kennedy assassination and 9-11. Um, and I didn't dive, you know, headlong into all those topics, but I had done some, uh, some truther type of conspiracy research off and on, but it was the, it was the whole flat earth thing that really got me sucked in because Mm -hmm. when I saw scripture after scripture after scripture, and I'm like, wait a second, why did I not yeah. see that before? I've been preaching this for 20 years. Why have I not seen this? And so I really, uh, you know, I have to give the Father credit, obviously. Amen. But I tell you, uh, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes in life, but a couple of things that that I did right and my wife and I did right was that we we studied diligently and we prayed fervently, and we were really just trying to seek the will of God. And I think that's that's why... He allowed these things to happen because, you know, he knew that we would do our best to stand up for truth. Right, right. And, you know, the Most High utilizes people like that um, because so many, as far as pastors, preachers, ministers, they are unable to overcome their indoctrination. And it's the same thing for the community at large that, the world at large, especially with biblical cosmology, that it's so difficult to overcome the brainwashing, the indoctrination, the all the matrix, you know, as far as all the yeah. people been conformed to the matrix and to a certain belief system. And as far as our, most people believing that we live on a, a globe and that the earth is round, I mean, immediately when you begin to look into the subject matter, it's not difficult at all to assess that there is no measurable curvature and that the properties of water themselves negate the possibility of it adhering to a ball or settling in a curved form. I mean, those two things, which are visually confirmable, uh, negate the whole possibility of the whole heliocentric model. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So, and and we'll go into some of that when we come back from this break. But like you, the Watchman's Parable is foremost in my life, and I believe it to be um, something that all those that stand themselves up to speak for truth and that the Most High leads others to for direction and guidance that we have a responsibility for um, ensuring that what we teach is credible and is aligned with the most high's word and so um 
And I know that, you know, for all of us, when first, um, as far as looking into this subject matter and this topic, I was extremely hesitant, I refused to do so for a very long time, but it was either prove myself a hypocrite or open my examination of it and to really go into it with an unjudging bias. Because again, mm -hmm. it's that indoctrination which uh, keeps people locked away into you know, the whole mindset that we live on a globe. And unless you open yourself to new possibility and go into the study of it with open mind, you'll never be led to truth. And for most people, that's the most difficult thing to do is to, uh, you know, go into the study, the examination of a new topic, even though it sounds ludicrous, uh, with open mind to allow truth to then uh, come forth and really teach you new, new thing, new discernment, and lead you to, in this case, a totally new reality and uh, shift in paradigm. So, yeah, and I, and I really do feel that uh, one important part of our prayer regarding truth was that we were also praying to God that specifically any deception or you know anything that was blocking us from seeing the truth, we were actually praying against deception as well. Mm -hmm. And so, yes. I mean, I really think He answered that prayer, you know. Well, and, certainly. And helped us to to be, like you said, to keep an open mind and to continue to investigate. And, uh, you know, my wife, within a few days, you know, or a week or so, she started noticing me, uh, you know, when I'd have free time in the evening, sometimes I would be watching videos. Well, I, I, I'm a movie buff, so I often watched, you know, movies on Netflix and whatnot. Uh -huh. and she could tell I was really concentrating on some stuff and just kind of in my own little world. And she's like, Hey, what, honey, what are you doing over there? You know, <laughs> and I, as I joke around, it's like, well, what was I supposed to say? Oh, nothing, honey. It's just flat earth. You know, but <laughs> right. somehow I managed to broach the subject and she was like, is that, is that legit? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. We'll be right back for a second hour, everyone. All right, welcome back, everybody, for a second hour. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Secrets Revealed on Truth Frequency Radio. I'm honored to have as guest Pastor Nate Wolf of Fired for Truth. Uh, Pastor, I wanted to go into kind of your journey to awakening um, and being somebody like yourself that has sought to understand more of the complexities of what we're dealing with with regard to the world the new world order and uh, the whole bloodline issue all of these things i find to be also encoded into the scripture and that what we are contending with as paul says is not flesh and blood but powers principalities rulers of darkness and wickedness in high places and so what most people overlook is that this really is a spiritual war and that the whole thing uh, with regard to biblical cosmology and the reason I believe it is coming to light in this day and age is because the Darwinian heliocentric and Copernican model, in my belief, is connected to what we see being advanced now as the next stage, the next aspect of this deception, and that is the ancient aliens, the extraterrestrials, are the creators of humanity, mm -hmm. and that they are the saviors, and that they're coming back to uh, redeem us from ourselves when we know that that uh, Christ is Savior Messiah, and that you know He's going to end the whole charade of the fallen angels acting as if they are gods, but. Um, if you would comment on that, and then let's go into some of um, the the other subjects and the other things that led to uh, your awakening to so much. And I know, as for myself, that 9/11 was a big catalyst to that whole journey for me. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different subjects, you know, that I have kind of dabbled in and tried to have a better understanding of. Obviously, you know, the, the first uh, topic 
that I spent a good amount of time on was the biblical creation. But as I mentioned before, you know, I had always thought about the deception that was in the world. I, I had, since I was young, my, my mom was always trying to help me to understand about the spiritual warfare that you're speaking of. And, you know, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 and following and other parts of Scripture. And, you know, when I was a kid, I always kind of just sort of blew that off, you know. And uh, the older I got and the more I experienced it, and she would often remind me of that. You know, when I would have a conflict with an individual, she would remind me that, you know, we don't battle against flesh and blood you know, yes, you have this conflict, but you need to look a little deeper into the spiritual reason behind, right. you know, behind these conflicts. And so over the years, I got more and more uh, open-minded to considering, you know, when something was happening, could this be a spiritual attack? Could it be, you know, something influenced? And, and I'll be honest with you, you know, the the churches that I had served with, you know, many good churches, but the churches that I had served with and preached at, uh, by and large, we're very conservative-minded congregations, and I think there's, you know, there's some good to that doctrinally uh, many times. But they were very often closed-minded to the spiritual realm, and right. you know, th- talking about demons and different things and angels, right. it just and the Holy Spirit, it just always kind of seemed to be, yeah, it's in the Bible, and yeah, you know, we'll we'll talk a little bit about it, we'll hit some verses, but. Um, you know, it just always stayed very uh, surface and physical. And so I had actually uh, started to dive into this subject, although I had not taught um, biblical creation, flat earth. Uh, I had not taught that at this congregation that fired me. But uh, several months before the Take on the World 18 conference, I had become uh, awakened to a, a, a true biblical understanding of you know, Genesis 6 and the angels yeah. that sinned and the Nephilim right. and the giants. And I actually did, here's the funny thing. I had d- done a study uh, with a Sunday morning class for about nine months on that subject and related subjects. And we went through all of the scriptures in the Old Testament. You know, uh, we looked at Numbers. We looked at, you know, Second Samuel. We right. looked at all these different scriptures. Deuteronomy, yeah. Yeah, Deuteronomy. And we began with Genesis 6. And... Uh, you know, I was awakened to that, and and I was surprised that I hadn't caught any flack from from anybody about the teaching, and and I believe that I didn't because I was very careful with handling the subject matter. Mm -hmm. I was very clear to give Scripture for everything that I was asserting, and, you know, I had referenced uh, the book of First Enoch uh, a handful of times, you know, particularly chapter 7, you know, 9, 10, 11, those types of things. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I stated, I said, look, I, I'm not sure at the time, I, I'm not sure if this is Scripture. I'm not saying it is necessarily, but I'm saying at a minimum, it certainly corroborates with Scripture. Yeah. And, and so, interestingly enough, I had already started to become op- more and more opened to the spiritual warfare, and right before I got fired, um, <laughs> I actually transitioned that uh, into a study on the occult. And so we were only a, a, a six weeks, seven weeks into this occult study when I got fired. And so there's so many different parallels <laughs> between the spiritual realm and then what I experienced. And you know, if I if I may, just for a moment, going back to that conference room and and those conversations, the text message and the phone call before I went to the conference room and was fired, I I sensed you know uh, a a bad spirit. You know, it, it did. It felt like there was some kind of a. You know, I felt like I was in a twilight zone. You know, because this is not how Christians believe uh, behave, and it's not how shepherds of the of the body of Christ should behave. Right. And I thought I thought to myself, you know, at the time I I noticed that it was way off, but it wasn't until a few days after that I really thought, I believe there was some demonic influence in all of this. And um, I mentioned to you earlier that uh, we didn't tell people that we were going to the conference, but our kids knew which uh, little town we went to. And someone who was rather uh, snoopy and kind of stalkerish on uh, social media apparently uh, Googled that town. And of course, what's going to pop up when you've got a 
conference with right. 500 people in a, in a very tiny town, it's going to pop up. And so we're confident that this person, you know, did some digging and began some gossip. And so I believe from, from the start of the conference there, uh, when, when this person found out and, and apparently gossiped with others about it, and then it, it went back to the elders and then the elders had talked with several people about it. Apparently there was a buzz going on, but guess what? Not a single person had ever talked to me or my wife. And so <laughs> it, it was gossip. It was malicious gossip. And yeah. so therefore, you know, I had to say that there was a demonic element that was at work in the church. Right. And, uh, so that was very eye opening. Um, but yeah, I have, I have studied, you know, many other topics. There's some topics that I've just kind of got into and haven't really, you know, taken the time to investigate fully, but, uh, certainly the nine 11 stuff, um, couple, about two years ago, I was looking at some of that and it started me down a road of, of really thinking, Hey, you know, I, I don't believe that I can really trust my government because I believe that uh, Satan's influence is very, very strong, you know, uh, being the ruler uh, of this world um, and, you know, people, you know, men suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. I believe that that was all connected uh, to right. the spiritual realm. Yeah. And uh, boy, that, that didn't give me good feelings as I reflected on what took place, you know, the day that I got fired because I made the connection there. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is the same kind of the powers and principalities. And this, again, is um, their influence over the mainstream churches that, it, you know, is causing people that are standing up for truth, even like the whistleblowers in government being attacked and, you know, locked up and uh, the whole thing with the Patriot Act and habeas corpus rights being stripped um, mm -hmm. and people being labeled domestic terrorists and then being put through a military tribunal system where they can be detained indefinitely and tortured. I mean, things yeah. are absolutely bizarre. I mean, yeah, and this is what's going on in this day and age, and the American people are just yeah. slumbering away, you know, and have no idea as to uh, the risks that are now um, come to light because it's no longer – you know, you're innocent until proven guilty. You're basically yeah. now guilty until proven innocent. And so, well, and the, the, you know, this, the connection, as I was thinking as well, when, when you look at what I was teaching and what I had come to believe and what I was investigating further, I mean, I, I did speak about, you know, the angels, the Nephilim, the giants, we got into a study of the occult. And so, um, I could see how the spiritual, you know, forces of wickedness in high places, I could see how they would be stirring things up because I was revealing truth that most of the people in the, in the church had never looked at. And some of them 30, 40, 50 years as believers. Mm -hmm. right. And I can see how they stirred, uh, you know, Satan stirred up the gossip to cause fear uh, in the leadership and some of the people that were involved in the gossip were actually, uh, children, adult, young children of the elders that fired me. And so mm -hmm. what I think happened was there was, uh, this surge of emotion and the elders were probably feeling pressured in some ways by the emotion of even some of their own family members. Right. And so they allowed themselves to be dictated by this gossip and, 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 you know, under the veil of, well, we're protecting the church from error, they sidestepped the scriptures and how they should have dealt with me. Um, and, you know, if if I was basically being fired without them saying it, they, they were basically saying I was a false teacher, that mm -hmm, they had to right. protect they had to protect the church from error. But right. they ne but I'd never, ever taught anything false. And I had never even taught the biblical cosmology. So it's kind of interesting, you know, like you said, guilty until proven innocent. Yeah. Um, I thought that a false teacher had to actually have taught something false before he could fit in that designation. But, right. but, I, but I found out otherwise that if they were just fearful of something, that in their minds, that gave them the grounds to just right. make me disappear. Uh, right. But, but, you know, but so that, you know, that was within the church setting, but you're right about, you know, the general American populace as well. 
but as I as I've kind of digested some of this Zen in the last two and a half months since being fired, I come to realize that sadly, in many, many cases, church members and even leaders of the church, as in this case, um, normally good men, you know, who tried to 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 rule and, and to lead well, um, that they're really no different than people in the world. I mean, it's it's a knee jerk reaction. It's a power and control reaction. It's a fear reaction. It's an ignorance reaction. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of just the human nature and, and what we're experiencing now across, across our culture. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and the thing with regard to the churches and even the, uh, the mainstream news and other platforms, which so many people look to for information, for news, and for uh, just general direction on the pulse of what's going on in the world, so many of these platforms no longer speak about or are presenting anything that is relevant. Mm. The American people is no are no longer being informed on anything that is real. They're being kept in a bubble and controlled with regard to what is being streamed as truth so that they are led to support a certain agenda. And, mm-hmm. you know, again, the whole thing with the, uh, the controlled opposition, and one of the reasons why I got out of the whole, because I used to be involved in politics and you know supporting certain causes and everything, mm-hmm. but I basically discovered that you know all the even all the presidents and um, the different people uh, that are sitting on the thrones of the world, they are all bloodline Illuminati. Yeah. They're all from the same family. And so we are all given this illusion of choice, and the left-right paradigm is completely false and controlled opposition. And so, mm-hmm. uh, and so much of, especially in Amer- here in America, so many people spend so much of their time uh, supporting either Democrat or Republican, fighting for one side or the other, and they're basically two sides of the same coin. You know, I mean, Mm -hmm. they dress differently and wear a different facade, but underneath they're controlled by the same uh, ruling mechanism. And they're nothing but puppets on a string dancing to the symphony of the devil, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, the beginning of my, um, you know, flat earth awakening, biblical creation, of course, as I started to dive into those related subjects, as you said, many other subjects were coming to mind through books Mm -hmm. that I was reading, through videos that I was watching, you know. um, And so I started learning about a little bit, you know, at least about the bloodlines, about the Illuminati, about the New World Order. And, you know, this is all stuff that previously I would have thought, you know, it's crazy to believe in that, you know. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) But I was like, okay, if they lied to us about creation and, and science, and I started to realize, you know, I used to be one of those uh, died in the wool Republicans. And, yes, you know, I thought right. that, I, th- I thought that Fox News was the only, you know, legit source out there. <laughs> yeah, and I yeah. started I started seeing the duality. And and you've probably seen this video clip of uh, where the news, many, many news outlets, uh, TV news stations, we're all working off the same script. Yes, and, and there's a mo- the same thing. Yeah, there's a yeah. montage of like, I don't know, 12 or 15 different stations from all over the country that on a particular day or saying almost verbatim exactly the same the phrase, thing. the same, right. you know, catchphrase, the same story. And that just blew me away. I was like, wow, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Absolutely. I mean, my eyes uh, have become open to many things and – I still, I recognize I'm still sort of a, a babe of sorts in this <laughs> truth awakening. Um, and obviously I'm most, I'm most comfortable, you know, sharing the testimony and sharing about bib- biblical creation. But there are many other subjects that I've been blessed to learn about and hopefully will continue to learn about. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that the journey or the path that the Most High has placed you on is going to give you the time that you're going to need to really come to discernment on things that are of a critical nature. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we don't have time to uh, study 
fluff anymore. You know, we are down. The game is being accelerated. We're at the end game of the the whole New World Order, order coming of the Antichrist agenda. The whole, um, as far as, you know, the collapse of the financial system that they have written about and have planned to orchestrate for a very long time. Mm-hmm. All of that is in the protocols. All of that is part of, you know, the agenda that they, the elitists have set forth for themselves and have declared and are not even attempting to hide. So it's all in your face and it's all now being publicly disclosed. Nobody's trying to hide it. All the, you know, the, all the uh, Freemasons, all the Illuminists, they're flashing their hand signs, their gang signs mm-hmm. on TV every time they come up. I mean, and again, there's no difference um, between Republican or Democrat. They're all serving the same kind of build a burger, eye at the top of the Illuminati pyramid uh, structure. Um, and they're forcing us. We are moving in that direction willingly or not. Um, mm. And so, you know, the world is being dragged down into that agenda. And we have to prepare for it and become knowledgeable about it because, you know, these things are not theories, conspiracy theories, but really conspiracy realities. Um, the, the truth of the matter is that so many conspiracies are true, so much so that it's mind-boggling and almost beyond imagination to be able to come to grasp on all of what's going on just because there's so much. And I do oh, believe, yeah. yeah, we're that generation. The Most High is bringing everything to light. And so, you know. Yeah, and, you know, I, it, what's really become, uh, you know, to the forefront for my wife and I, and even our kids, you know, our, our kids are all biblical earthers. You know, they they studied it for themselves. They discussed things with us. And, you know, they all came at it uh, a little bit awesome. different, different stage. But I can honestly say that our family of six are on the same page, at least with that. And, uh, you know, we've started to notice uh, the last year or so, we really started to notice the predictive programming in the movies and TV shows and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, just like you said, it's, it's pervasive. And right. now, now it's like, you know, you can't almost, you, you cannot watch, um, anything without seeing some kind of symbol, you know? Yes. And some people would say, oh no, you're going to find what you're looking for, but no, it's there. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. And even in some of the, you know, quote unquote Christian singers and different things. I mean, like I yes. was seeing, I was seeing stuff months ago, uh, with a couple of different uh, singers that are Christian. And uh, and now, you know, you've got, uh, you know, some of their clothing lines that have Illuminati, you know, triangles mm-hmm. and different right, things on right. there. And I'm just like, wow. Yeah. Um, so now it's like you said, I mean, in a sense, you're not trying to be paranoid. You're trying to be discerning. You're trying to be shrewd. Um, you know, you're trying to be like the, the men of Issachar who understood the times, you know, right. uh, but at the same time, you, you really can't trust anyone. You've got to vet them. You've got to, you know, test the spirits and, and make sure that you're not just blindly following, you know, man. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, there was a time when, um, the most high showed the prophets uh, as far as what the illuminists were doing in the dark, in the secret, you know, um, in their underground ceremonies or, uh, in their worship of the false gods, the blood sacrifice, the ritual, uh, even the cannibalism it's written about in Micah chapter three. Um, and all of that, the kind of abomination that they were involved in. And yet now we see that, you know, like every time MTV has a, a movie award, they openly perform a satanic ritual right there yeah. on the stage for the whole world to see. Mm-hmm. And so they are mocking and openly laughing at us. And, you know, the whole thing with Albert Pike, he, he said in his um, vision of bringing forth a one world government that the whole reason for what would be the third world war that particular conflict was to 
exhaust the extremist Christians, Zionists, and Muslims um, so that the they could destroy themselves and then they could bring forth the atheists and the nihilists and the communists and then bring forth out into the open the pure doctrine of Lucifer mm -hmm. and the worship of Antichrist. And so, I mean, if, if that doesn't, you know, just... And then in the protocols, it speaks about how they're going to bring forth this world ruler. Uh, this is exactly what is written in the prophetic word. And so the conspiratorial oh, yeah. is lining up with the prophetic, and it's all coming to light. And so, you know, people uh, that have made fun of and um, laughed at Christians, you know, especially those that study the word and about the end times, because, yeah, everybody's been speaking about the end times and how they are coming near, but we are that fig tree generation. It's in our lifetime that we saw the recreation of the nation state of Israel, and I believe mm -hmm. that most certainly that was a harbinger for, and even for the, the fallen angels, that was a, a an indicator to them that they've got to accelerate their agenda because their time is short, and certainly... Yeah. In my opinion, that's that's what we are seeing. Well, it's it's definitely uh, been an eye-opening experience for me and my wife because, you know, b before about a year or so ago, we were just kind of like everyone else, kind of just, you know, cruising right along and, and not really paying attention, not, you know, not having discernment and most of those things. And uh, we've actually been you know, more fervent in prayer. We feel like we have a closer relationship with the Creator, you know, than we've ever had before. And uh, the interesting thing is, you know, not only did the congregation fire me in, in such a unloving and swift manner, um, but the, the elders actually told other congregations in the Toledo area. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, basically that I was a false teacher. And so, you know, it's they they basically also, uh, in a sense, isolated us from, you know, other other congregations that were of this group, and so it's kind of like, man, you know, you you take my knees out from under me, and now you're you know you're taking taking Check me out. out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, so you definitely see it. It's I was accused of not only being a false teacher, but I was accused of smearing the elder's good name. And I'm thinking, wait a second. Oh, my God. You know, slander, correct me if I'm wrong, Zen, but isn't slander when somebody says something falsely against exactly. you and right. uses your name? Well, yeah. in all of my interviews, I never used the name of any of the elders, including never used their first name. I never said the name of the church or the, you know, the address or phone number because I looked at it as an issue of leadership and awareness and, and love. And that this wasn't just happening to me, it was happening in a lot of churches. You know, a lot of elders were behaving badly like right. this. Right. And so hold on, brother. Okay. Hold on. We'll be right back from the final segment, everyone. All right, welcome back everybody for final segment. Uh I want to give you a chance to finish your thought there before we went to break, uh, Pastor Wolf, if you remember what you were speaking about <laughs> actually my mind was wandering to uh, facebook um your daughter-in-law joy had mentioned about how she thought that my wife must be really great and i, I so i want to say something about that real quick um you know it's as most people understand being in this truth you know community um and speaking out is is no picnic and like you say you know we always have folks attacking us sometimes it even comes from within you know various elements of the truth community but you know my my wife and i we've been married 26 years and we were married young uh, right out of high school and she has always been you know supportive of me through moves across the country two or three different times you know all these challenges in ministry that we faced uh, over the years and i just really uh, feel blessed that she came alongside with me from the start as as i kind of dove into the biblical creation and and now looking back you know with with some hindsight and trying to look and see you know and notice what god was doing i really do believe that he blessed us to do that together because i would not 
be able to do what I'm doing now, number one, without the Father in heaven, you know, making these things happen, opening these doors of opportunity. Number number two, my wife and my kids support. And then number three, you know, just all the people from all over the world, you know, who became Facebook friends, uh, Patreon supporters, uh, subscribers. And so it is, uh, you know, very humbling. And I know that there are many uh, people who, as individuals who don't have a spouse that's on the same page with them. And so I'd recognize, you know, how, how blessed I am. And mm-hmm. uh, we have had, you know, spiritual attacks. Uh, it seemed like for about the first month, we were getting spiritual attacks almost every single day. Uh, the last month or six weeks, we've had some. It hasn't been as much, but I, I do know many have spoken about how they are praying for me and my new ministry and praying for my family daily. And that, I, I believe, is making the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I just I didn't want to forget about that because it is it is so good to to have, you know, a companion, uh, a partner, a spouse that uh, is working with you, you know, in truth. And and as you know, families, you know, wives, kids, husbands, they make many, many sacrifices to support. Uh, this kind of uh, bold truth. And in my situation, even more so because, you know, my wife is working full time and being diligent and trying to make sure to help support our family. You know, our income was basically halved at a, at an hour's notice, you know, and that's not an easy thing to come back from. Right. Uh, but the father's blessing it. And uh, there's no doubt in our minds that this is of God because we prayed more fervently and we're more focused than we'd ever been. And, uh, I, I don't have any other, you know, explanation other than for whatever reason, God chose to, to use me and us in this situation, um, to help, you know, to help wake folks up to the truth. Well, you know, initially the transition and the breakaway from, things like the organized structure of organized religion, uh, that is a difficult thing, especially for individuals like yourself that have your livelihoods and your income Mm -hmm. tied into that. Uh, For me, the road was different in that I was never part of that and basically just started doing uh, radio shows and broadcasting the things that I had learned. And now I've gathered enough of an audience that my whole focus and everything that I do with regard to serving the kingdom goes to support me and my efforts. And it's a beautiful blessing that individuals all over the world, you know, support us with mm-hmm. um, just you know, however, whether it's in purchasing books from us or uh, sending us donations, whatever, but it will come together in that same way for you. And the most I will bless you in your walk so that you can continue to be bold Mm -hmm. in your stance for truth. And not only is my, this my prayer for you and your family, but, um, this, you know, would be the highest way for you to fulfill your role and mission of being here, especially in this time. Um, and especially with the uniqueness of your story. And I believe it is a incredible testimony, which will go a very long ways into, because you're, you're on the forefront, really, of what is going to be happening to a lot mm. of pastors and preachers and uh, people that, you know, uh, and it's unfortunate, but uh, I do predict that this is the way it's going to be, that, you know, the, the churches are drawing a line and they are unwilling to cross over, even if it is truth, you know, they don't, Mm -hmm. they don't care about that. They are concerned with their credibility, their sponsorships, the people that, you know, subscribe to them and that give them money. They don't want to jeopardize any of that. They don't want to put up on and give a a platform for the pulpit for anybody speaking on anything that would be controversial, uh, whether it's connected to truth or not. Go ahead. Yeah, I believe you're absolutely right on that. And, uh, you know, 
as I said before, Zen, there have been many ministers that have been fired for for actually preaching uh, biblical cosmology. There have been many, many church members and families that have been basically shunned or run out, run on out of churches. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Robbie Davidson, his family experienced right. that uh, with two different churches, and right. you know, he wasn't the pastor. He, but he was trying to dialogue with uh, ministers and leaders about truth. And right. uh, you know, I initially the support in in the comments and the messages and the emails that I've received have been from you know all kinds of folks. A lot of them are believers. And uh, it's just now started to happen that some folks have reached out to me that have shared that they were in ministry and got fired for something similar or, you know, just kept running up against the the blockade and and decided I can't deal with this. And I did meet uh, a minister, a man named Carlos. I met him uh, and his young son at uh, this conference in Denver, Flat Earth International yes. 18. I met and, him as well. Oh, yeah, very, very yeah. friendly, fairly friendly man, very genuine. You know, he was a Spanish-speaking uh, minister for, I right. think, almost almost 20 years. And if I understood it correctly, he said he had an opportunity with a different church uh, that was going to begin in January for another full-time uh, work, and he turned it down because— he knew that uh, you know this topic had been broached, and he knew that they were not going to allow him to preach the truth. Uh-huh. And so he's uh, he's a pastry chef. Him. Yeah, he's a pastry chef by trade, and so he is working. But he was asking for prayers, and I told him, I said, "Look, I said uh, you are on the right track." And uh, he believes that he made the right decision. He's trying Absolutely. to patient, you know, patiently wait. So I have started to have other ministers uh, reach out to me, and and that makes me feel good. Now, if we have time, I'll share, um, you know, a blessing and that God gave. Uh, you know, about six months before I started into this uh, study of biblical creation, I had had it on my heart for a few years to begin a ministry that was directly to ministers because I had been fired mm-hmm. once before. Uh, my family had been, you know, through different traumatic experiences, uh, for lack of a better term, at the hands of some people in the churches, some leaders and some individuals, not not all, but some. And uh, I was starting a, a ministry to ministers <laughs> that basically was to try to help encourage and give counsel and pray and and, uh, you know, help those that were experiencing conflict and difficulty in their ministries or those who had been fired. And that flopped, and I couldn't figure out why. And I was kind of a little perplexed with with the Father, because I'm like, well, you know, this is a real thing. This is a need that I know exists. Right. And, and I'm trying to do, you know, something good, and I don't understand why all of these doors were closed. So I, I recognized the doors closed, and I stopped working that. And then come to think of it, you know, the day I got fired, many of these folks I spoke with on the phone said, Nate, um, I told them about that. And they said, Nate, you know, I we think, we know that eventually a big part of your ministry outreach is going to be to ministers who have either yes. A, been fired for speaking out on these truths, or they're underground and they're afraid to speak because they're afraid they're going to get fired. Um, and I thought to myself immediately, whoa, uh, you know, there's a reason why God put that on my heart two years ago before I even got into this uh, biblical creation discussion. And I really do feel that he put that on my heart, but it was just the timing wasn't right. I was trying to force it Nate's way right, and right. Uh, everything was good about it, but the timing was not. And so there's just one little thing that I, I look back on and I just think, wow, you know, uh, God was working there. Yes, and let me also offer this platform to you and to uh, those that contact you that want to share their story in the same kind of manner as uh, what you are trying to facilitate, that I would be glad to co-host, you know, if you ever need to do a show and okay. you would like to interview with somebody and to bring their story and to give them a platform to sharing that and, wow. and to have it as record in the you know the public um arena that, oh, that yeah, I would certainly you. yeah I'd certainly be uh 
glad and honored to to do that with you so anytime just let me know um even if it were to become something where you, you wanted to you know schedule once a month we have this a uh, uh, do this kind of a, a discourse I, I would certainly be glad to to do that and so oh, thank consider, you for offering that yeah yeah, no yeah i know of at least a few and you know it may be in the very near future that some of those would be willing you know to speak um about it and and that's the thing you know certainly my situation is unique in many ways but in the general terms it's it's happening to a lot more uh folks in ministry than most people realize because i think right. there's a lot of folks who've been fired but they didn't go public. They didn't share. They didn't yes, reach. Exactly. You know, they they didn't reach out to Zen Garcia or Rob Skiba or Robbie Davidson or Dean Odell. They just got fired. And um, I think one other difference is is that I realized that I had, I had had enough of being uh, uh, treated like a hireling, and I had had enough of the power or and criminal. control. Yeah, or a criminal. I'd had yeah. enough of that, and I was willing to just say, "Look, I'm going to preach the truth, and I'm going to let." Uh, you know, the Father in Heaven take care of the rest. Exactly. And, and once I reached that point, and instead of viewing this firing as a devastation, um, it, w it was a tragic, you know, circumstance, but it mm -hmm. wasn't a devastation because I could see that this was now an open door uh, to preach and truth. And a turning point. Yeah, and many people were like, Nate, you don't understand. You didn't get fired. You got released. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, maybe there's something to that. Yeah. But yeah, thank you for that generous offer. I'll, I'll definitely uh, let you know if that opportunity presents itself. And, uh, you know, yeah. my my skills are somewhat limited as far as uh, social media and uh, all kinds of stuff. Interestingly enough, though, also about two years ago for uh, two and a half, two years ago, for about six months, I was invited to do a radio show on Blog Talk Radio. Uh, that was with a group of guys called Five Guys in a Bible Radio Show. And <laughs> they'd lost a couple guys, and so they, they kind of drafted me in. And for about six months, I was doing a weekly uh, radio yeah, show, yeah. co-hosting, had bought a microphone and some other things. And so the funny thing was, is my wife had said, um, when things got busy and some focuses had shifted, uh, I decided to step down from that for a period of time. And my wife said, you know what? Um, you never know when God uses, you know, experiences and things. And she said, maybe Absolutely. some, maybe someday you'll have an opportunity. And I was like, eh, maybe, probably not. And wouldn't you know, uh, I really am much appreciative of having that six months because yes. I'm, I've been much more comfortable on the radio interviews than I know I would be if I had never had that experience. Right. Right. So you, you never yeah, know absolutely. how the father's going to use those things. <laughs> right. I, I think you're a natural. Um, you seem very comfortable and very, um, you know, you know, as far as being behind the mic, um, you know, because a lot of people interject a lot of ums and, you know, a lot of words to cover their thoughts, but uh, you don't see that with you. And so there is a, a naturalness to the way that you present yourself on the air. That's why I'm I thought this would be a good a good thing for you to be able to do, and so please do reach out to those that are you are already in contact with. Let's see if we can get them lined up for shows, and um, you know, give you both give you a chance to co-host as well as give them a chance to present their story. Because you know, when this happens, even for you, they expected you to just go disappear quietly into the yes. night, and uh, you know, just be devastated and refrain from continuing in your walk and your bold stance for truth. But yet this has invigorated you and is now going to be the catalyst for yeah. really setting the next chapter of your journey. Um, well, and it also shows, um, it also shows the, the, the arrogance and the power and control, because like exactly. I said, the, uh, the the sheet of paper that they handed me was not written in any way, shape, or form as a contract, but it was basically like a dictation. This is what's happening. You're being fired. We're going to do this. We expect that you will exercise extreme discretion, you know, on any public communication. Right. And and so the this the interesting thing is is that they they 
believed, like you said, that I would just stop and disappear. And and most ministers would have, because most would have said this, wow, I just got fired. I just, you know, I lost a $63,000 salary and I, and I was paid every single Friday. So, you know, I got a regular, regular paycheck and that was a blessing to my family. A lot of ministers are saying, I can't go public because if I do, guess what? I'm not going to be able to get another, quote, job at a church. And um, I guess I had come down the road where I was ready to say, okay, I'm taking a detour here. And it wasn't that I was trying to, you know, be irresponsible uh, as far as providing for my family, but I just really felt that if I'm doing what's right, the Father is going to you know, protect us. He's going to provide, you know, if I'm seeking first, you know, the kingdom and his righteousness, and if I'm seeking truth, that all of these things are going to be taken care of. And, uh, and I don't know, I'm sure you've been accused of this as well, but so many folks, they get, they don't want to hear about biblical cosmology and they accuse you of not preaching Christ and they accuse you of making, you know, this the primary issue. But I make no apologies that I feel that I was called specifically, at least in some big way, to to speak and preach about biblical creation. So I'm not going to apologize for doing that. Uh, that also does not mean, however, that I don't speak about Christ and I don't share the gospel with people. If anything, I probably have more opportunities off camera, you know, off radio, um, in messages, uh, emails, meeting people in person at meetups, meeting people at conferences. I probably have more opportunity to do real ministry and and speak about Christ um, than I than I ever did from a pulpit, and that sounds kind of strange to say that, but I believe that's true. I think you might be muted there, Zen. Thanks, brother. I apologize. There you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> uh, but what I was going to say is that absolutely, you're totally correct in that a lot of people that come to this discernment they were militant atheists and agnostics prior to learning that the Bible had encoded into it this geocentric cosmology. And as far as uh, presenting a worldview of our enclosed world system, so much so that they begin to reread the scriptures in a manner they never had previously. And when they do so, they learn that the the, the word is prophetic and had to have been inspired by the same creator that established the enclosed world system. So mm-hmm. then they began to be exposed to and come to understand that the creator has a son and that he was sent in the world in order to redeem the fall and to rectify us from our fallen state. And so all of that also becomes to be real. And so, yeah, I agree with you that, you know, people are seeking answer and l- looking for uh, platforms of truth where they can actually get um, meaningful answer. And mm-hmm. so much so that it can help them to explain their situation, but also it come to closer relationship to the creator and the creation. Because yeah. within all of us inherently, We all want to know the larger reasons for why we are here and what all of this is about. It's just that, you know, people have been led astray to such degree that uh, they become lost and complacent. Uh, But if you can uh, reignite that catalyst within them, yeah, who wouldn't want to know about uh, salvation through Christ and eternal life and, and an inheritance that is forevermore? I mean, that's the most important thing and the really the the real reason why we are here but uh we'll definitely talk about that um you know at some other point but i do agree with you that a lot of people are being led to you know reassess everything with regard to the bible and the truth contained within it yeah and i've i've met i did meet one young man at the take on the world conference that that was exactly what happened and that was eye-opening because i had heard from several of the speakers about many many people that they know that had come to christ um 
at least you know secondarily because of they initiated this study on biblical creation and it, and it hit them that God's word is true and they they realize I need to investigate Jesus you know mm-hmm. but at, at this last conference in Denver I met several people who told me the exact same thing and so you know on the one hand technically it's true that uh, this this is not a salvation issue but it is disingenuous to say that it, that it doesn't have that opportunity to affect people's salvation right. eternally right. and that's Absolutely. enough that that's enough reason for me you know to continue doing what i'm doing and so right now we're we're seeking we're praying continuing to seek the will of god um, you know, and where do I go moving forward? You know, do I just keep doing what I've been doing? Are there, are there new things added to it? And so it's exciting, um, because we know that the father will, you know, reveal those things at the proper time. And we just need to, uh, be faithful in what we're doing. Try not to allow discouragement, you know, uh, to hit us and to get us off course. And, right. uh, so, yeah, I just uh, very much appreciate, you know, you letting me come on and, and share about the testimony and and talk about these subjects that are so very important. Oh, yeah, absolutely. My great honor. And I would also add that your story is going to get out there and that there's going to be a platform, a church or somebody, some organization that's going to reach out to you because they know you are teaching and standing for truth, and that to them is going to be important because there are so few voices out there in the world that are really doing that. And so there's a great need for teachers like you in the world. So um, you're, you know, the interim right now, the, it's just temporary, and I'm sure, brother, you're going to find a beautiful home where you're going to be needed in a manner that um, will fulfill your sacred vow and your sacred role for standing for truth and really educating the people in this time. And and there's a great need for that. And I believe and pray fervently that the Most High utilize you in that manner. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, that's that's our prayer. And, and we know that God will do that. You know, it's just... Um, trying to be patient, trying to stay humble, you know, trying to continue to seek and make sure that self, you know, doesn't get in the way, make sure that, you know, Satan's schemes and attacks aren't, you know, slowing things down or detouring you. So yeah, it's, it's exciting. It is a journey and we so much appreciate all the support and the mentors and just everyone uh, who's been praying for us. Yes. One more time, give out your Patreon where people can support you and also your website contact info. Okay, so on Patreon, you can find me at, at www.patreon.com forward slash Nate Wolf. Um, I also have a PayPal direct link, which is paypal.me forward slash Nate Wolf. And uh, I can be reached by email at discerningdad73 at gmail.com. And uh, on top of that, you know, you can find me on Facebook as Nate Wolf, and uh, folks will often message me on Messenger. Uh, so those are some different ways that you can support us. Uh, but above all, the, the prayer is the most important thing, and just uh, continuing to, you know, continuing to lift us up uh, to the Father on that. I think you're muted again there, Zen. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. But um, yeah, please do. I'm asking everybody to please support you and to uh, help you through this interim. And thank you again, everyone in the chat. We appreciate all of you. Love you. And let's support our brothers and sisters and help them to stand for truth. God bless all. Good night. Be blessed, brother. And we'll talk soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Shalom.